aid convoys are reportedly being used as Trojan horses for wannabe European jihadists heading for Syria. Europol believes thousands of young Muslims are travelling to the war zone and they're using humanitarian missions to help them get there. As artist Sarah Firth has been finding out. Ambulances destined for aid distribution. Ahead of them, roughly a 3,000-mile journey that will take them across Europe and into the heart of a country cracking under the strain of a devastating ongoing conflict. We drive them here in Britain uh, to France, Belgium, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Greece, Turkey through Uppsala port, uh, to Istanbul, Ankara, Adana, Antakya, and then we go to Syria. These vehicles packed with life-saving medical supplies. But it's not just aid that's regularly making its way to Syria. With the number of British fighters in Syria now estimated to be nearing 400, and with the recent revelations that a suicide bombing in Aleppo is thought to have been carried out by a British man who'd been part of an aid convoy. And the convoys are coming under increasing scrutiny. Now, I know you know that there's some concern in Britain about um, young British Muslims crossing over, leaving Britain, going to Syria. I think it's important to point out, isn't it, that your humanitarian organisation makes it very clear to those participating that it's a charity and that this isn't a political project. Um, yes, you're right. The government have this concern and we support them to secure our country and to secure the world because we are against um, you know, any uh, terrorist type of activities. We are completely against that. But we cannot confirm that everyone have joined our convoy is humanitarian. He is purely uh, aimed to help people in need. We cannot confirm that. MP for Birmingham, Khalid Mahmoud, says he's been warning for years that many young members of his constituency have been going abroad to fight. For the first 18 months, hardly anybody took any notice until about three months ago. Uh, the security services said that there is a concern about the amount of people that are going across uh, who eventually, uh, those that survive, will come back. If they weren't paying close enough attention before, they certainly are now. And in recent months, there's been an increase in the number of Syria-related counter-terrorism arrests. But many feel that might be too little too late. It's certainly closing the uh, door after the whole horse is bolted. There's no doubt about the scale of need in Syria. But whilst the aid is welcome, British fighters are serving to further complicate the situation on the ground. The organisation has done some incredible work with providing aid to the people who need it in Syria. Does it concern you, though, that there are going to be people in this country who might see the convoy as a way of gaining entry into the country? I do. I certainly do. If, if I knew about any of them joining my convoy, I would completely discourage that from my convoy because that will basically affect the credibility and the, you know, the trust that we have gained. Many of those who make the long journey to Syria risk their lives on the front line to help those desperately in need. But serious questions remain over how to better ensure that those leaving to help don't end up staying to fight. Sarah Firth, RT, London.